Hi guys! In our last video, we have shown the unboxing of the new TiVo Tarantula Pro. Now, we will show you how to assemble the printer and explain how to do the first checks and calibrations. Regarding the tools, and together with the ones included with the kits, we recommend you to also use a square, pliers, a Phillips screwdriver and a few metric wrenches. Hey you guys! For the first step, start with a small 250 20x40 profile, both 350 20x40 profiles and bag A01. We strongly recommend you to work on a flat and clean surface because it will help to maintain the squareness of the structure. Start by placing the profiles like this. Pay attention to the orientation of the bigger profiles. Some of the holes have screw slots on one side. These you must place facing down. And on the sides, place the screw slots facing outwards. Take the feet and screws from bag A01. Insert the spring washers on the longer screws and use them to secure the profiles to each other. Check the squareness and make sure that it is perfectly flat on the table. And then tighten the screws. Take the square ruler and measure the distance on both ends. You should get 250 millimeters on both sides. Now flip it upside down and install the feet. On the right side, we install the feet on the outer slot. And on the left, we will install the feet on the inner slot. That right side will actually be the back of the printer and that left will be the front of the printer. Flip it back and install the 400mm 20x40 profile. Again, pay attention to the orientation of the profile and also to the screw slots that must be facing up. Check the squareness again. It's very important to guarantee the squareness of all the profiles. Take bag A03, the motor mount plate and the Y-axis motor. This motor is the bigger one. Place the plate on top of the motor and secure it with the M3 by 6 screws.
Then get the M4 by 8 screws and T-nuts and put them on the plate. On all these screws that have T-nuts, don't tighten them just yet. Next, let's assemble the Y-axis idler. Take the M4 by 25 screw, the bearings and the spacer and assemble them like this. Place the idler mount plate with this orientation and finally the lock nut. Tighten the screw and nut. And then the M4 by 8 and T nuts. Now install the Y axis idler at the back side of the printer. Don't worry about where exactly on the profile you should install it. When the assembly is ready, we will get back to this to adjust the final position. Next, get the Y-axis carriage and bag B02. Here, we will assemble and install the wheels. We have two types of wheels. A couple of wheels will have eccentric nuts and should be assembled like this. First, the screw, then the wheel, the small shim, and finally, the eccentric nut. The other couple of wheels don't have eccentric nuts and have spacers instead. These should be assembled like this. The wheels with the eccentric nuts must be installed where you have the bigger holes and the wheels with the spacers must be installed where you have the smaller holes. On the other side tighten the lock nuts. Tighten all four wheels. At the end, you should have something like this. Take the Y-axis carriage and slide it on the middle profile. The belt slots of the Y-axis carriage must be facing the idler. Next, check the grip of the wheels. You must turn the eccentric nuts with the metric size 8 wrench. You need to find that sweet spot. Too loose and you get wobble on the carriage. Too tight and the carriage will be hard to move and the wheels will deform. Now, get the Y-axis motor assembly and install it at the front of the printer. You must be able to slide it under the profile. If you notice that you need to raise the structure to install the motor assembly, that means one or both front feet will no longer touch the table. If that's the case, then you probably tighten the feet too much and they deform the bit. To fix that, Get four 1mm thick washers and install them between the foot and the profile. Now, 
secure the Y-axis motor assembly. Like the Y-axis idler, secure the motor near the edge of the profile. Later, we will adjust the final position in more detail. and it's starting to look something like a printer. Now, we need to adjust and secure the Y-axis motor gear. Pull the Y-axis carriage next to the gear. The gear must be aligned with the belt slot. With the gear at the ideal height, tighten the set screws. Make sure that one of the set screws is tightened against the flat area of the motor shaft. The kit includes a couple of timing belts. Take one of them for the Y-axis. Always make sure you loop the belt like this. Always teeth with teeth. Loop one end on the Y-axis carriage and secure it with a couple of zip ties. Don't forget to cut the excess of the zip ties. Next, pass the belt around the motor and the idler. And then, pass the belt through the other belt slot. Secure again with a couple of zip ties. Try to maintain some tension on the belt when closing the zip ties. Cut the excess of the zip ties and also what's left of the belt. Every time you need to tension the belt, just loosen the Y-axis idler, pull it and tighten it again. Perfect! Get the B031 bag and take one of the smaller end stops. Place the screw and teen it. And install it on the side of the profile next to the Y-axis idler. The end stop must be installed so that the Y-axis carriage can reach it and trigger the switch. Inside bag A04, we can find the screws that will secure the board enclosure. So, take it and flip it so that the board is facing down. Take one screw and teen it. You have a hole near the inner edge for that. Slide in the enclosure and use the other couple of screws to secure it to the profile. Flip the structure to reach the bottom screw and tighten it. Then, get the power supply and connect the power connector. Get three more screws and T-nuts and place them on the power supply side bracket.
slide it in, but be careful with the wires. And tighten the three screws. And this is how it looks like from the bottom. Now it's time to assemble the front panel. Take the panel, the display and bag A02. Remove the knob first by pulling it out. Then use the small screws and spacers. The screws on the back side of the display and the spacers at the front side of the display. Install the display in the front panel and secure it. And now you can put the knob back in. Take the M4 by 6 screws and T-nuts and place them on the sides of the panel. And the front panel is ready. You can now install the panel on the front of the printer. Now you need two vertical profiles and the B01 bag. Insert the spring washers on the screws and then use them to secure the vertical profiles. Make sure that the vertical profiles are secure. Before we can move to the next step, you need to check if the vertical profiles are parallel with each other. If not, loosen the screws and adjust them. Also, check if they are 250 millimeters apart from each other. Now, get the X-axis carriage plate and bag B041. Assemble the wheels the same way as the Y carriage ones and install them. Here we have only one with eccentric nut and two with spacers.
take the right Z carriage plate and bag B04. The wheels will be assembled a bit differently here. First insert the screws, then the spacer, and then the wheel and the lock nut. This second one is exactly the same as the first one. Now, the third one, we place the eccentric nut, then the shim, then the wheel and the lock nut. Tighten the screw and lock nuts. Now we will assemble the X-axis idler. Take the screw, then the bearings and then the spacer. This is a tapped hole, so screw in the idler. And at the back side, secure it with a small nut. You can use a metric size 7 wrench to tighten this nut. Now get the left Z carriage and bag B03. We will now install the lead screw nut on it. Place the screws first on the top side. And at the bottom, place the spring washers. Place the lead screw nut and then the four nuts. Use a small pliers to help tighten the nuts or a metric size 5 wrench. For this next step, we will need the 20 by 20 345 mm profile. Use the M5 by 15 screws and spring washers to secure the profile to the left Z carriage. Now, get one of the stepper motors and install it on the carriage. Use the small M3 by 6 screws. Don't tighten these screws just yet. The bigger end stop is installed on the X axis and you will need the M3 by 10 screws to secure it to the motor. Also don't tighten these screws just yet. Now slide the X carriage on the profile and check the wheel's grip. Adjust the grip by turning the eccentric nut. Now, take the left carriage and slide it on the left vertical profile. 
Also check the wheel's grip and adjust it. Do the same procedure with the right Z carriage on the right vertical profile. Take both Z carriages out and join them but don't tighten any screw yet. Slide the entire set on the vertical profiles and lay it on the base. Next, get the M5 by 25 screws and the top horizontal profile. Again, check the screw slots on the profile and turn it to have them facing up. Then, tighten the screws. Measure again at the bottom and at the top. You must have the same distance at the top. If not, loosen the top screws, adjust the vertical profiles at the top and tighten the screws again. And now that you have both vertical profiles perfectly aligned between each other, you can now tighten the right Z carriage. This way, you will have a perfect alignment on all your Z wheels on the vertical profiles and at any height. Slide up and down to confirm that it is moving correctly. Now it's time to install the Z motor. Get the other stepper motor and bag B07. Start with the motor support mount. Put the M4 by 12 screws and T-nuts first and then the small flat M3 by 14 screws. Use a Phillips screwdriver to secure the mount to the motor. Then install the Z motor behind the left vertical profile. Take the coupling and put the small O-ring inside. Find the flat area of the motor shaft and insert the coupling. But make sure the motor shaft does not reach the O-ring. Tighten the first set screw against the flat side of the motor shaft. Don't forget to tighten the second set screw. Now, install the lead screw. The lead screw must be inserted in the coupling and must rest on the o-ring. Then, tighten the top side screws. Take some time to check the alignment of the lead screw. The lead screw should be parallel to the vertical profile. If needed, you can add shims between the motor and the vertical profile to fix the alignment. The lead screw nut has some play available 
and that can help with the alignment as well. You also need to check the alignment when viewed from the back side, and the Z motor has some play available to adjust sideways. Finally, get the stepper motor with the gear, the extruder and the long screws. Place the motor under the plate on the left Z carriage with the connector facing the lead screw and then place the extruder on the top. Be careful not to tighten these screws too much or you will break the plastic lid on the extruder. And this third one, if you tighten it too much, the extruder gear will jam and will be hard to turn. On the X axis motor, turn the shaft to get the flat side facing you and install the gear. You should align the gear with the profile slot. Then tighten the set screws. For this next step, you need to push the X axis motor to the right. Get the second belt and loop it on the X carriage. Again, teeth with teeth. Secure it with a couple of zip ties. Now slide the belt in the bottom profile slot. then around the motor gear and then loop the other end on the X carriage. Try to get the belt tensioned while securing it with the zip ties. Cut the zip ties and the remaining belt. You can apply tension to the belt by pulling the motor back. Now you can tighten the four screws. Get the hot end mount plate and install it on the X axis carriage. Use a couple of M3 by 8 screws. Before installing the hot end, inspect the assembly. We have a detailed video explaining how to check this and how to fix it. A correctly assembled hot end will avoid leaks and clogs. Check the video description for the link. Take the M3 by 8 screws and secure the hot end. And the assembly is almost complete. 
Now we need to install the PTFE2. On the hot end side, you need to insert it at least 5 cm in so that it can reach the nozzle. The other end inserted in the extruder. Before installing the heat bed, remove the protection sheet from it and get all the parts from bag B021. Place the heat bed on the carriage and install the screws and springs. Then put the leveling nuts. and on top of the heat bed, glue the print surface. Next, rotate the coupling to lower the Z-axis. Lower it until the nozzle touches the print surface. Then, get the last end stop and install it on the left profile. Secure it against the wheel so that it gets triggered. Raise and lower the Z to check the switch. Now get bag B042. This will be the top lead screw bearing. Put the bearing on the support and use the round screws to secure the bearing. Next, place the flat screws and T-nuts. If everything is perfectly aligned, this should fit in place. Last but not least, let's connect all the cables. At the back side of the printer, start by connecting the cable in the middle. And then the heat bed cable on the right. The left connector is if you want to connect a leveling sensor in the future, and since it's not included, leave it as is. Connect the Z stepper motor, connect the Z end stop, connect the X stepper motor. Connect the X end stop. Connect the Y axis end stop. Connect the Y axis stepper motor. Connect the extruder stepper motor. 
and finally the display. For the display, you have two flat cables. Connect the EXP1 on the display side to the EXP1 connector on the board side. And the same for the EXP2. And this is how it looks like. Use the remaining zip ties to secure and organize the cables. Move all the axes manually to their full extent to check the cable movements. Before turning on the printer, we must run some quick checks. So move the heat bed back and forth and see if the nozzle reaches both edges of the bed. In this case, it does not, so we have to fix that. And to do that, you need to adjust the position of the Y-axis motor and also the position of the Y-axis idler so that the nozzle can reach both edges of the bed. And now it's correct. Regarding the Y-axis end stop, you should have the switch triggered when the nozzle is at the edge of the bed. For the X-axis, you have more than enough travel, so just check if the X-axis end stop gets triggered correctly. And the assembly is now complete. The TiVo Tarantula Pro is now ready for its first power on. Plug in the power cord and turn on the printer. We still have a few checks before we can start printing, so the first thing to check is your temperature sensors. They should read your room temperature. Next, enter the prepare menu, then move axis, and then move X one millimeter and rotate the knob to increase or decrease the value. Confirm that the x-axis is moving correctly. Increasing the value on the screen will always move the carriage away from the end stop. Go back and select the y-axis and test the y-axis also. and do the same for the Z axis. Increasing the value on the screen will move the Z up. If you now try to test the extruder motor, it will not work because the firmware has a protection mechanism that blocks the motor if the nozzle is below 180 degrees C. So, to test the extruder, you first need to heat up the nozzle above 180 degrees C. When it reaches that temperature, you can then turn the extruder motor. While the temperature is rising, check if the hot end fan starts spinning when the temperature goes above 50 degrees C. Now, let's check the heat bed. Select 50 degrees C for the heat bed and check if it can reach that temperature.
In the meantime, lower the hot end set temperature down. Next, go to Control, then Temperature, and click on Fan Speed. Select a value above 200 and check if the layer cooling fans start spinning. Next, we want to test the end stops, so manually move all the axes to the center. Select Home X and immediately trigger the X axis end stop. Confirm that it stopped. If not, press the small reset switch near the display. Do the same procedure for the Y axis and Z axis. If everything is working correctly, you can now home all the axes by selecting Auto Home. Now, all we need to do is level the bed. Select Disable Steppers and move the X and Y axis manually so that you get the nozzle on the first corner of the bed. Use a 0.1 mm thick piece of paper and adjust the leveling nut until you feel the nozzle touching the paper. Move to the next corner and adjust it. Do this on all four corners and as many times you need until the bed is perfectly leveled. All done! Now you can insert the memory card and start printing. Our test prints and review will be done on a future video, so stay tuned. Thanks for watching and as always, if you want to support the channel, you can with Patreon or PayPal. Keep following us here on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. We will see you guys next time. Bye!